Hey everybody, it's Brady here from Inner Strength Check, rolling dice and playing games for personal growth and social change. And without further ado, let's get into it. Hello, hello everyone, and welcome back to my podcast. Uh, it's been a while between episodes, quite a while. Um, there's been a lot that has happened. Um, this year has been a lot more kind of complex and taxing than I would even say the pandemic itself. Even I feel like um, potentially a lot of you are in this situation, but there's a bit of a this sort of notion, this duality of, oh, well, everyone else seems a bit more sort of um, relaxed or happy or what have you, you know, now, oh, lockdown's over and it can be easy to kind of fall into those social comparison traps. But anyway, I just thought that I would kick this episode off. I've spent a lot of time avoiding episodes because I've had like a lot of hangups, I think, that we'll get into in a bit. But um, actually what um, sort of inspired me to get back into doing the podcast again was a meme the other day which is pretty interesting Uh, i think it was musicians aren't people on facebook anyway and it had a meme with like a sheep on the left that was like you know the crying dog um or don't call it dodge call it dog come on guys the um you know the 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 tearful dog you know boo who was me and it's like a musician and it's like oh i wonder if anyone will like my music on the right it was like podcasters and they were just talking absolute shit about nothing and look if people are into that that's fine that's valid and also excuse my squeaky chair and my pc intermittently um sounding like it's going to burst into flames because the fan is screaming at me right now so in that back to the point um to that meme it's like you know they're just talking shit and you know i listen to a few podcasts a fair few for podcasts um really kind of went off music for a bit which is very strange for me we'll get into that in a bit too but um some of the iheart radio podcast ads i'm sitting here thinking are you fucking kidding me are you fucking serious like this is i guess it's like the audio equivalent of just daytime tv or whatever and i'm not putting myself above those people in fact they're quite slickly produced and the fact that people can just press um and record (laughs) without all this undue anxiety or, or anything like that or self-esteem issues, well, good for them. But it just sounds like you're listening to two people drinking. And um, speaking of drinking, you might hear me take a sip now and then, so this is all ironic, but it's water. I'm doing dry July. Ah, delicious cordial. So basically, I sort of thought about it and I was like, you know what? I probably have capacity to say a lot of good things i mean i've got a lot of content in my little content bank i've got a lot of ideas all that sort of thing but i guess things like adhd and anxiety and stuff being what they call disorders at the point of performance um, can really put a a bit of a you know when it comes to now talking can be (laughs) so uh, there's a lot that's sort of there have been a lot of barriers so i guess what i'll just sort of start with is what's new since the last episode for me in life So I transitioned from my old job in social housing advocacy and support, which um, immediately into a contracted dual role with Headspace. And like, I felt like I did well, um, but like with a lot of other things in my life have fallen, fell down on the organization and admin side, which it's unfortunate because that experience going from working with quite um, experienced coworkers in in a a very difficult sector Um, Not to say that Headspace isn't, or that I had a lot of experienced colleagues within Headspace, but I guess coming from such a comprehensive need to be across everything and just such a complex role into a more focused youth mental health role and um, working with some newer graduates really kind of showed me, hang on, I actually do have a breadth of knowledge and skills, but again, uh, you can call this the cognitive distortion of minimization or magnification where your brain goes yeah yeah, i don't care about all that i want to focus on what you suck at which i did um so look i spent a lot of this year really kicking and denigrating myself and i think that i didn't realize uh well i did realize i knew every now and then i do the das depression anxiety stress scale and it's like 
anxiety, meh, minimal. Uh, stress, pretty high. Depression, go fucking check yourself in, like off the charts. And I've been kind of living with that because that's been my normal. And the other thing is, is that the ADHD medication has actually allowed me to function a little better during the day at least until it wears off. So uh, there's been a lot of masking Uh, but there's been a long period of me going, yeah, this isn't good, man. So it, it's things really kind of deteriorated. The executive dysfunction issues just got worse. Anxiety came knocking back. The depression just has been, yeah, it's, it's been a newer kind of depression. I think that the fact that I have ADHD, even though that's more inattentive type, I've got enough of an internal motor and internal battery to continue where perhaps more severely depressed people who don't have that sort of inner Duracell bunny might just be in bed all the time. So I feel like I've probably propped myself up on that a bit, but the wheels have really fallen off and depression has taken a bit of it. It's really seeped kind of in and the burnout um, to the point where it's actually sort of I would say demeaned and disallowed my kind of strategies and lifestyle choices. So the topics of this podcast, so things like new music, like it's been so bad that my brain essentially has gone, you're not listening to new music. Okay. I'll go back to some older nostalgia boner stuff. Nope. Okay. Why not? And I just had, I wasn't even able to do that. So I've just kind of been idly listening to podcasts all year. And the only time that I've been sort of, uh, regularly listening to music as while well. I've been practicing, but it's just, it's strange. So I feel like I've been in a holding pattern with everything too. Cause, um, I mean, depression comes with its own, uh, cognitive dysfunctioning issues. So that compounded with the ADHD and the stress, it's sort of, yeah, in terms of initiating tasks, being able to compartmentalize and prioritize stuff. Um, you know, everything's felt like equally catastrophic and just like, I'm sure people who experience mental health issues and um, neurodivergent or have, you know, certain issues with their cognition, you can relate to this, that there's this like impermeable barrier. It's like if you want to go and say clean your office or do the sheets or wash up, there is this physical sensation, even though it's neurologically true, and there is this physical sensation that feels like it's forcefully stopping you like a barrier um and that's just gotten worse and worse and worse all year so and recently i got rocked really hard by covid so it was a combination of that like unrelenting stress that anxiety not taking the best care of myself with sleep exercise eating like it all fell off the wagon (laughs) And this is while taking, you know, a strong dose of medication that's meant to help me function. And I think that that has lifted that functioning to a point where um, it's actually made it harder to sort of, I guess, observe or take stock of how much the other stuff had fallen down. So essentially, I feel like I've been running off the smell of an oily rag um, as opposed to typically being depressed and anxious because that's that's, that's my normal. It's fine. My my average is at about a four. If I'm slightly shittier than the average person, I'm doing all right. But um, yeah, COVID really fucked me up. I actually had the hospital checking in on me. Um, and I think a lot of that is just that my body collapsed and that little bastard really got me good. Um, and the longer I've left this podcast, the more I've feared it. I've beat myself up. I've been catastrophizing what making an episode can or should look like, you know, fancy intro, better compression, all that sort of thing. Um, And I guess my kind of underlying perfectionism, uh, which again, as I've mentioned before, is more by way of more unrealistic standards or, which is probably a combination of growing up neurodivergent um, and compensating behaviors for my deficits or just my frontal lobe just not being able to plan properly going back before to that notion of like everything feels equally ah and actually needing to sort of manually sit down and prioritize tasks so even fun stuff has felt like a chore finally enough but also kind of scary or anxiety inducing so anyway 
been baking on all this stuff all year. All this stuff's been in my head. So it's like, come on, man, this is, this is bad. We've, we need to do a little bit more about this, but it's just, I've been so immobilized that it's just not taken any form. So funnily enough, um, at the moment, um, I'm doing dry July. So my binge drinking's kind of gone, it kind of went back to uni days levels where, you know, like, yeah, me and mates and stuff, you'll have a drink when you go out, you get smashed and that sort of thing. But it was that, but also this just unstoppable impulse to just drink, drink, drink until I feel physically sick, like problematic, you know, like probably under the guise of partying and stuff, but I just, I haven't been taking care of myself during the week. So when it's been hitting the weekends, I've just been getting fucked up and like on a mission to like slaughter myself. I remember last couple of gigs I went home from and I don't typically need to need to drink at gigs. It's, it's fine. I can or I can't, whatever. Um, I'll get to that in a second or I won't, but like, literally like last call doing shots, you know, sipping from a flask or whatever. And then just being so irritated on the train home or the Uber home that I'm not able to sort of like sit there and continuously just get as blind as fucking possible. And I think that there's sort of the reduction of that anxiety when you have that first drink, it's like, Oh, you know, negative reinforcement. Um, you've taken away the bad stimulus, which is stress and your brain's gone. Ooh, Ooh, Ooh. If we take, if we'd have this and it takes that away, cause this is what negative reinforcement actually is. Negative meaning something being a stimulus being taken away. Reinforcement meaning you're more likely to do it again. So mine was just like, you know, a lot of people with ADHD, bipolar, or whatever are like, yeah, it calms me down or things are quieter. And that just reduction in that constant noise is just, oh, oh, this is nice. Hey, you know what? I could go for two. Oh, I'm feeling great. Let's go for four. Let's go for six. Let's go for eight, you know. Um, and it just escalates from there. So uh, I don't mind doing dry July. It's fine. I don't think I have any dependency issues with alcohol. It's more self-control when I go for it. And it's, like, it's fine to cut loose, but it kind of, it had been reaching a point where I was like cutting loose and then just not being able to stop. Just, yeah, anyway. But if you'd like to support me on Dry July, I'll put a link in the notes, I think. Um, also, ironically, um, I tried shrooms for the first time recently. Well, okay, so I tried them before, but you know, a couple few times of just you just wasted someone handing you something going oh all right i'll get that loop no effect so this time i just thought you know what uh i have friends that i've seen in the literature and i've seen you know people doing things like microdosing or what have you and i've stayed away from hallucinogenics because i had a very bad experience with them with lsd in my teens but um and also the fact of bipolar it really is playing with fire but um, so I've very low dose and I tried it and, you know, I was expecting these revelations, these major epiphanies. Well, I wasn't expecting that, but, you know, you hear people say, oh my God, it changed my mind, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. Like, <laughs> honestly, for me, I feel like if people think that the way that you sort of think on in that state is like something of a revelation, I guess you welcome to I guess a nicer feeling of being divergent or having a certain personality type sort of a little bit more open to experience because honestly nothing changed really actually and maybe it's the depression too it's like um more of like internalizing and validating what I've been working on therapeutically so I just had this moment where I'm you know I wasn't like out of out of my mind. Yeah, sure. I, I was like, this isn't working. This isn't working. Hey, hey, babe, to my partner. Um, why is there a dimmer switch on the lights? Other than that, it was <coughs> really not anything. But 
it just sort of calmly kind of validated and internalized what I'd been working on. It was almost like it was, I was going through a checklist. It's like it sort of gave me some space and went, yep, yep, you're right. I'm working in that way. Mm, maybe not this. Um, and as someone who was really into mindfulness and positive psychology and stuff when I was younger, I thought it, you know, you hear about shrooms and, you know, the stereotype like, whoa, man. I really thought it would be like something like that. And, you know, someone, you know, people say set an intention and mine was like, oh, self-compassion. Um, and what came out of it at one point was me basically just being like, standing there going, I don't feel high or happy. I mean, it felt a bit giggly and like laughing for a bit, but I was like, no, dude, this is fucked. Like, you're still numb. You're still flat. All right, well, let's go back. Let's go back to some key moments. Like, um, one of my favorite gigs of all time was Cult of Luna in 2009. Honestly, like, one of the key sort of events of my life. <laughs> and, like, my first sound wave, I went by myself after having fucked experiences with the first two festivals I went with because I was basically shepherding really fucked up people I didn't know and uh, missed all the bands I wanted to see, including Phantomus. God damn it. But anyway, so it just sort of solidified and clarified, like, hey, um, dude, this is not good because I sort of retraced back to those and I felt nothing. I thought, okay, well, what about, like, when I finished my undergrad honors, I felt nothing about. We won't talk about that just now. <laughs> my masters and like, you know, meeting my partner and that sort of thing, falling in love, all that sort of stuff, like keystone, capstone, whatever you want to call it, experiences and no, nothing. And I'm sitting thinking, okay, this, I'm literally taking a, some sort of hallucinogen that, you know, people usually giggle their asses off. I have these wonderful insights and it was just flat and cold. And I was like, oh, Okay, so this year I've been trying not to beat myself up so much. And again, here's the black and white thinking because I'm zero to hundred and my usual MO is to basically be, operate through life through like disciplinary and self-flagellation. So um, I've been trying to pull back from that and try and take more of a, you know, self-acceptance, mindfulness approach, but in that moment, I was like, you know what? Mindfulness and self-acceptance aren't working for you. Maybe you the anxiety, but man, you need to actively challenge this. Your executive dysfunction is so bad. The depression has you so by the balls. Um, you have simped so hard for this uh, episode of depression and burnout and stuff that like, no, you actually need to return a bit to that more disciplinary approach. And if you get it wrong and go 100%, well, you're just sort of falling back into your old ways and that's stressful. But I've been so stressed all year by not doing what I want to do, like this podcast. And the sort of internal language has been like, oh yeah, man, well, I just have to mindfully accept where I am right now. And it's like, yeah, that's fine. But again, that's gone zero to 100 where I've, just sitting in it now um and the depression and anxiety and dysfunction blah blah blah, blah, blah. i have loved that because it's like cheers i'll take over and another thing that sort of came out of it was also what i was working on so i was talking before about how um sort of minimizing my positive attributes with um my work and i'm a very angry person um funnily enough due to way I'm wired, easily dysregulated, you know, and I think as an Aussie male, it's a very typical response for, if you look at the anger iceberg, which is quite a useful model, really, um, it shows that in a simple diagram, like how much is underneath anger is the final expression of a lot of, you know, more yucky, complicated secondary stuff. And I honestly think that a kind of combination of neurodivergent and mental illness shame 
is was something that I've just started unpacking and going, alrighty, alrighty. Um, yeah, I'm pissed off all the time. I'm anxious all the time, but like, I think shame is kind of what I need to more attack than anything. Cause sitting in the conceptual land of, oh, it's perfectionism, it's low self-esteem, it's da 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 But I think growing up with this duality of being so intelligent in some ways and very dysfunctional in others and our society basically rewarding intelligence and assuming that if you can function academically or what have you, um, or if you're bright, in some respects then surely you function okay but not functioning well at all I think you you start to accumulate a lot of baggage and the ADHD diagnosis has been life-changing for me in regards to that I've been able to kind of unpack and forgive myself for a lot of things but it's there right so anyway um the closest thing you could have, say I had to a revelation in this experience is going, oh yeah, by the way, um, you really need to look at this shame shit, dude, because um, tick, 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 yeah, we're on the right track here, but I, you need to address this because it's fine to address the, the, you know, the anger, which is 99.99999% inwardly directed, but you ask my partner, you ask my mum, you ask friends, it's so obvious, like it leaks out of me, it leaks off me, you can smell it. I'm not yelling at people, but internally, yeah, like it's, and I'm walking around masking, masking, ha ha ha, I'm fine, no, no, like, you, you can smell the cortisol, like, steaming off of me, so, um, I think I've tried practicing self-acceptance and self-compassion, and it really was just, that experience was just a reiteration of, no man, your depression is really bad. Um, you need a bit more of a tough love, gritty teeth approach. So the difference is I've been working therapeutic on, therapeutically on that self-talk and that criticism. That that used to be the driver of all that. Um, so I guess it's about me trying to find that 50% instead of that 100. And I'm really struggling with that because the depression and anxiety and stuff really have me and the AHA really have it in that black and white, oh, it's either, you know, slave driver mode or it's nothing at all. Um, so yeah, I've been working on that and just instead of basically, as, as I said to young people with counseling and clients and stuff and people I know, taking positive versus negative doesn't work to me. Um, there's helpful and unhelpful thinking and we're gonna do an episode potentially more than one on that versus our cultural notions of just think positive so i've been working on okay is this helpful so mindfulness and self-acceptance well that's well intended but how helpful has it been right so in terms of life stuff also i mean we're moving soon um we're in a bit of a stoush with our housing situation landlords decided to pull the pin there's been some uh let's just say heavy self-advocacy we've had to do there that's been very stressful um trying to sort out a desperately needed holiday for mid-august and now receiving a notice to vacate for the end of august trying to find new work because my headspace contract was time limited um so i've done 20 or so job applications in the last couple of weeks and multiple interviews so I've done those, I've put the time in, I've done the grind, now I'm giving myself a break and some space so I can do stuff like this, but the problem is is all that self-esteem and procrastination or whatever is kicked in, so rather than having some like meticulous episode, you know, which I wanted for today, I just thought, well, just take it easy breezy, a few dot points, just talk it out, so that's where I'm at and I can be honest in that things aren't going too well in terms of my mental health but I'm not crippled by it it's just I need to stop masking and going ha 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 yeah everything's cool and like actually work on stuff that is 
you know, driving, being always stressed and pissed off and stuff. You know, I just want to get back into things, you know, reasonable way. So in terms of that, let's talk about hobby update. So music, um, one thing that's really helped is guitar and bass. I've been relentless with that. I play every day, at least an hour, usually two. Um, Rocksmith 2014's really helped because it's all pretty colors and a bit of a feedback loop. And I've gone from barely being able to play like Akadaka on guitar at the start of the year to now, now I'm playing stuff like Artificial Brain. Um, not well, but I am playing it. So like that's kind of been an area where my just persisting, showing up, playing, that's remained intact. Uh, in terms of board games, tabletop and stuff, I'm running still running a campaign of Mutiny Zero, but I mean, some issues in my mind there, not with the players or the campaign, just me. We'll get to that in a sec. Board games and stuff, I got a couple of new ones. I got Zia Legends of a Drift System, which has a solo supplement, um, because I'm probably slightly ASD enough to <laughs> be into playing board games by myself. I even got a Ikea shelf for all my board games and they're sitting there kind of taking up mental real estate and again I'm finding it increasingly hard to just sit down and just crack open a board game and play it solo or with someone even video games like I mean Steam sale right enough said um, so I've been taking the library approach to its maximum instead of feeling guilty about unplayed games <laughs> Just printing back how many I've got uninstalled. And just playing at my leisure. Um, exercise is fucked. Gym membership's over. I live in a hilly area, so that's been an excuse. Because the huge hill I live on is hell on my increasingly old man ankles. I mean, I've rolled my ankles heaps because I'm on coast. So now they're like, fuck off, I'm not walking up that hill. Uh, but it's not a great excuse. Um... So once we're sorted with moving and I've gotten eating back up to speed, then I'm gonna like, I don't know. Uh, I reinstalled Pokemon Go, there's the ring fit, so I don't know, maybe nerding it out. So anyway, um, that's a bit of a life update that is an episode in and of itself, whatever. So I was gonna do a whole huge um, episode about the trajectory of um, my hobbies and I was really going to sort of dive deep into sort of the research and the conceptual stuff behind it and all these different biopsychosocial factors that I think could be behind it. But that's been a barrier um, to getting started. So today I just wanted to talk about my kind of, I talked previously about my sort of, I guess, mental health trajectory. Then I talked a bit about more about my music trajectory. And um, considering it's a major part of the podcast, I thought I'd, today we'll talk about my kind of hobby trajectory. Um, and I don't think I even really need to touch much on video gaming because that's been omnipresent. We're millennials. Like, I had a Super Nintendo when I was a kid, you know? And that progression of X console and PC Master Race, whatever, when older, you know? I don't think that's... In terms of what I want to sort of impart with the podcast, I think it's more important for me to talk about things like tabletop and stuff because I actually have very major self-esteem issues with that hobby, but I love it so much. So it's this kind of real interesting dynamic. And speaking of loving it so much, I remember my friends um, in the early 2000s one day we're playing Halo and a mate's brother came over and oh, there goes my laptop taking off. Um, so we're playing Halo, original Halo, because this was like early 2000s, right? And um, brother comes over, mate's brother. And um, we're like, oh, hey, man. And he had, th- I think, 3 or 3.5 or whatever D&D, broke out the sheets, talked about it for five minutes, and I was like, these dice there's too much too many numbers on those dice what do you do oh you, it's basically like you know this that, that and I was like I could just play Diablo 2 and the computer does the maths for me I hate maths um all right I'm gonna fuck off and actually play Diablo 2 while you guys are doing that you guys are even nerdier than me 
and that's saying something guys like what the hell is this shit so i avoided tabletop like the plague because i was just like it's just math with talking um which is probably a more appropriate conception for third edition since there's more crunch in that than say fifth um and fifth edition has been the version of D&D that's been ex- like kind of accessible for me with my absolutely clapped out working memory um so I was like no fuck off and I did not take any invitations to it so fast forward like a good 10 15 plus years it's living in Brisbane drinking cordial it's the late 2010s 2017 it's fucking hot it's humid the coast is too far away what the actual fuck am I going to do with my time I don't know um and to Vault Games so thank you Vault Games because you guys I would credit very much with getting me into the hobby so I was like oh, well this place is nice it's air conditioned has some cool looking board games and stuff you know I was never into board games I was like Monopoly Cluedo I don't care um and then I began playing stuff like Alien Legendary Encounters which is a freaking awesome solo co-op deck builder based on the Alien series um one of my first dates with my partner of five years I was actually playing that with her and there and played with some other mates so stuff like you know Scythe um Catan stuff like that and um yeah I was like oh this actually is all right board games aren't just lame stuff that's tucked under the cupboard that you play when it's raining and the power's out or whatever and then one day I just was looking at the RPG things and I was like oh my brain can't handle that what are you talking about what are you doing to me and um I pulled Star Wars Edge of the Empire off the shelf from Fantasy Flight Games and I was just like a bow the artwork was just nuts I was like hang on hold the fucking phone and you know briefly reading the setting and i'm like oh my god it's the edgy star wars i always wanted like you know mandalorian wasn't out but it's like a lot of the reading is like oh my god i could run that kind of a game and this setting's all about like criminals and like you know it's the dirty seedy jab of the hut underbelly of star wars dude that is sick and then the dice I think the dice were a good trick for me because they didn't have numbers on them they had pretty little symbols symbols and different little colors and I was like yay no numbers <laughs> turns out that was maths in disguise anyway so I bought it out of curiosity and then I started reading it and I was like oh my god this is amazing this is like I could run a sandbox video game and go anyway with it hell yeah brother so i went back and i actually bought the beginner box which i honestly feel like reviewing for this podcast i think it's the best introduction i could have ever had to this hobby and i'll die on the hill of it's the best ttrpg tabletop roleplay game beginner supplement i've ever seen or used so then i just gm'd the starter scenario of my friends and most of them hadn't ever played tabletop before and we had a blast and I was improving stuff. I was kind of following the script, you know, just realized like, you know, shit goes south or goes way better than expected on both sides. And it's like, well, how do I like interpret this? What do I say happened? And I'm like, oh my God, I get to BS. That's rad. And um, yeah, now it's like, wait, this is like, video gaming but with more options and everyone has to kind of have a think about what the outcome is it's like a choose your own adventure but like you got way more control this is actually rad fun we had a blast all laughing um you know i didn't we didn't have to make any characters or pre-gen um it was corny because it's star wars like come on i know everyone has member berries i remember for star wars but you know it's corny but yeah it was sick so yeah i enjoyed that 
and then we moved to Melbourne after I graduated masters and to be honest uh, I, I'm sure I'm going to get yelled at by this from someone on the internet but compared to like Queensland is a very extroverted people you know um, they'll say hi when you walk past but if you're like minding your own business say at a gig or whatever someone's going to come up to you and be like mate um, whereas Melbourne's a little more insular clicky a lot more people so didn't really have a social group of sorts just working so I kind of used tabletop I was like all right well maybe I'll look at my local game store good games and then I ended up playing in a Star Wars Edge of the Empire campaign for a couple of years and it was a blast I played a droid named Krishu who I uh, was based the name's based after the Wormed album um and he was literally metal as fuck like his backstory briefly was just that you know he was a c3po style protocol droid and i don't know um he you know j- there was a jump because they were running from the imperials blah 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 and you know i just was thinking how do i kind of make up a backstory for basically a brain injured robot that's a bit unhinged and there was like a pulsar or whatever that flashed his hard drive and now his brain no work no good um and he was the droid, but he would run around screaming and stuff, um, and shanked a couple of people. Um, and I was like, this is fucking rad. I love this. Um, and I'm not the biggest fantasy guy, but I was like, you know what? I'll give the OG a try. Oh, let's go on a D&D campaign and shout out to our DM because our group's been together for nearly four years. And I think both the group and the DM have been a major influence on that um and the tone of the campaign has been a lot more gritty and you know sort of not low fantasy but a little bit more without the edginess and the soft core porn a little bit more kind of like game of thrones or warhammer or something you know not the fancy cutesy la di da fantasy i was expecting um and that kept my interest and I was like oh this is great um from there I thought you know what I'll give jamming a try again uh and I expanded into Numenera which is a tabletop role-playing setting it's basically the mechanics are like fifth edition for dummies (laughs) but that helped my broke ass brain because D&D melted my head trying to get um around and yeah, my first ever kind of full campaign that lasted, I think, like 12 months. Numenera is like a setting that's set a billion years in the future. So a weird post apoc fantasy sci-fi mashup. So that was good. Um, then Alien RPG, other free league stuff, um, Forbidden Lands, Mutiny Zero. Um, I've got stuff on my shelf like Red Market and Elite. Red Market's Elite Dangerous. Um just before literally a couple of weeks before the clan invasion kickstarter i was just talking to some random and i was like oh man i fucking love macquarie 2 what a sick game that was and someone was like yeah yeah, yeah it's awesome the, the tabletop it was based on was good too and i was like excuse me what and then i went and looked into it and boom hyperfixation mode activated and got really excited about BattleTech. and i bought like the beginner box and then the clan invasion kickstarter um, started <laughs> yeah words and um, I'm not going to tell you how much I spent on the kickstarter but it wasn't heaps but it wasn't insignificant and I love it it's like the corniest setting ever it's very much a product of its time <laughs> um, it'd get in a lot of trouble now I think it was released but yeah anyway so underpinning all this was a lot of hype fixation on the kind of the meta like GMing stuff, going on RPG and getting tips, you know, world building, what to do in XYZ. Um, And honestly, for me, GMing, I found was a more complicated hobby than my day job. So much to balance. Group dynamics, prep, world building, if you go into that, you know, really needing to be assertive. I actually learned a bit about being assertive from doing it. Um... But I had to sort of move to rules light systems for more kind of accessibility and going with my energy because underlying all this is undiagnosed ADHD and diagnosed bipolar and stuff. Um, 
and like at the same time I was also writing for a music magazine and was playing bass as well um and I really really all the, the, the thing going back to the thread about um work and what I'm sort of not great at in that working memory organizational stuff well tabletop role-playing games require you especially if you're running the game to have a lot of rules in your head or easily referenced holding numbers really number crunching even rules light systems you know there's mechanics there's what do you do when this happens what do you do and i fucking suck at that and i really suffered with that and i nearly quit the hobby quite a few times so during lockdown I thought I had brain cancer because one day I was like, fuck, I, I'm really struggling to read. And I, I, I'm i like really not taking in any information that anyone's telling me. Uh, from there, I spoke to my psych and that sort of thing and ended up getting an ADHD diagnosis. And because I have comorbid bipolar and stimulants are a real risk of whoosh, and I've had a full psychotic episode in the past. They're like, all right, let's do the full neuropsych test, um, which was super interesting. Um, so I got diagnosed with inattentive type ADHD at age 30 and also had a side flavor of um, learning disorder, specifically in maths computation, um, which made sense, which makes sense with a lot of what people with ADHD struggle with in terms of holding that information and working memory. It really requires to do specifically things that are related to the deficits in terms of chaining numbers. Blah, 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 blah. Look, it made sense because my it was assessed that my conceptual maths was actually above average, which probably explains why I enjoy things like stats, which is sort of the art and science of picking apart and bullshitting maths. But also why I enjoy tabletop mechanics conceptually, but I really suffer in actively holding them. It's something I really struggle with. I've nuked campaigns over it um, and stopped one shots and nearly sold my books a million times. Um, there's been times where every week I've played and I'm like, I'm, I'm selling my fucking books. You know, this is that black and white thinking. But making, you know, good friends in the hobby um, and I feel like kind of like metal and stuff that a lot of neurodivergent or sensitive or certain personality types, we all congeal in these kinds of hobbies. Um, so I think people get it and having groups that get it help. And cause of like the diversity of the groups, there's often, there's at least someone in every group I've been in that is a steel fucking trap with rules and instead of beating myself up over not being that person, because I have, um, I've sort of really learned to be like, okay, cool. Yeah, it's kind of a backup, but trying my best to still remember things. But anyway, the actual fun, like people said, like, oh, dude, that game was fun. This is fun. People still rock up, you know? The only person that went, ah, I'm out, was due to some interpersonal issue, personality conflict between people in the game but you know use of narrative world building npcs and accents improv flexibility all that sort of thing uh, my excitedness my passion for it you know that gets me by and that's the fucking point but i'm still stuck in this space of being like i'm not good at the rules and it's like dude people could care less really anyway so in terms of similar issues so i guess in terms of hobbies really tying it up um i recently got into music theory and lessons again mechanically there's research to suggest that music itself is highly mathematical and the use of music theory again impinges on that real working memory short-term memory use of the brain um, and I feel like I downplayed what I'm good at, which is I've developed a lot of good ear, been persistent, really kind of a breadth and depth of listening. And again, mm -hmm. focusing on weaknesses, like engaging with that granular information. And yeah, it's, that's another hump that I'm trying to get over and getting lessons has been good. So shout out to Luke Miller. You're a legend, mate. 
um, yeah, shameless spruik there because he's really helped um, sort of head shrink more than anything. Uh, it's been good. So anyway, um, video games, really, I've kind of almost fully repealed really intensive linear RPG style games for more sandbox and emergent gameplay games. And that sort of crossed over into my GM because I think the RNG is something of a mini game for me uh, as a GM and having that, I don't even know what's coming next emergent narrative and then building something based on that going, huh, um, before the session is interesting. Um, and um, yes, the game, so games like Kenshi and No Man's Sky and stuff have just been good because trying to be a social worker and hold all that vicarious trauma and stress and caseloads all day, you don't really want to come home and play something super tactical. Um, yeah. So I got all this other stuff too with things like Battletech. It's interesting because that's the one thing that is kind of unique and granular, but because it holds my kind of, I guess, I like it that much. And there's so many nice little tables for dumb people like me that it is still a bit accessible. You know, that's something I want to get back into. Anyway, so I've wanted to get back into podcasting and, you know, really just imposter syndrome, big time, unrealistic expectations, that sort of thing. I think, again, growing up neurodivergent and being highly intelligent, high functioning in some ways, but also major deficits uh, and our society conflating eyes oh, smart with eyes oh, functional um hid a lot from everyone so i think the diagnosis of adhd has made sense to everyone but also being like wow um but the average age of our adhd diagnosis for a male is 32 and the average diagnosis age for women is even longer because of so many things gender roles uh, expectations all that sort of thing so anyway <laughs> what's happening from here so obviously i'm in the process of juggling holiday moving bullshit related to my housing looking for work mediating all that sort of stuff so i'm probably taking a bit of a break but i also want to keep my foot in this skin in the game here and just yeah and again get past that self-criticism that perfection is that more casual content isn't valid um, but I'm not really at the stage where I'm comfortably internalizing helpful self-talk and being like, dude, it's fine to just put stuff out that's fun or whatever. Um, but I think as, you know, as things improve and that starts kind of sinking in a bit more that I will put more stuff out there. Um, I have been putting some covers on YouTube. Um, I do plan on you know, reviews, that sort of thing. So there will be stuff, but... I guess priorities I just thought I'd overcome the inertia that I've had all year about actually just putting out a goddamn fucking episode (laughs) and doing it so thank you for listening to my ramblings I promise that I'm actually doing quite well in most respects and I'm actually in a pretty good space in my recovery journey it's just it's more realistic around I've been really sort of working on and focusing on, yeah, a lot of that insecurity stuff. Um, But yeah, I think there's good things on the horizon for me and I hope that you're doing well and um, we will catch up soon. So have a great day and good luck and good mental health to you and happy gaming and fun as well. Cheers for listening and um, I'll catch you soon.